All right, we are live for YouTube. So whenever our Girl Scout says the promise in law, we cannot show her face, but we can have her voice go. Excellent. I already have the Canva files slides up. Um, so if you'll just make sure. Uh, I guess you could spotlight me and that would prevent the speaker from popping up to the side on the YouTube. It should. I'm sorry, Mary, what was that? I heard I was hearing the echo from YouTube. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, if you spotlight my camera here, that okay. I spotlighted um, all night. So that way, because when I, you share slides on YouTube, it does show the speaker next to the slide. Right. So if we don't have something spotlighted, the girl would automatically pop up. So. Okay. And you're going to have to tell me when it's six o'clock because this computer over here has the wrong time on it and it doesn't show up on my phone when I'm zooming. Okay. We got about, about four or five minutes left, four minutes. Okie dokie, I'll get another drink. Oh no, these are bigger. Darn it. Now they're not gonna fit. It's nice to be able to see what you're doing. Hmm. Is it just me or is that the slide really big for some reason? It looks normal size to me. Okay, then it's just my phone. All right, girls, so if you're just arriving, make sure you check your name 
on your Zoom to make sure it just shows your first name and your level. One of the little brownies at our class last night had her phone number listed up there. So we wanna make sure none of your personal information is up on your Zoom names. And um, you can go ahead and put your name and troop number, or if you're from another council, what council you're from in our chat box. And that's how we're going to be taking attendance. And you can do like me and just get all your supplies laid out and ready to go. We will be taking volunteers to say the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, the Promise and Law, and you can put your name in the chat. Um, I'm not sure if Miss Natasha already has volunteers for all three. I know somebody already claimed the promise, so. Oh, they're putting in their name for attendance, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Mary Kate. Hi, Gracie. From Col from Coronado. Awesome. Thanks for coming. And Maddie, looks like we've got a wide range of girls. So since we have daisies through cadets here today, don't worry if you can't keep up, if you're a daisy and you can't keep up. You can go back and watch the video on our YouTube channel at a later time. But um, this is just, you know, work at your own pace kind of class. And if anybody has problems or questions, please feel free to put it in the chat. And then uh, if Miss Natasha finds a question, then she'll call on you and we'll ask you to unmute. Because I, can't really see the questions from my phone. So <laughs> how close are we to six o'clock, Miss Natasha? Oh, you're at 6.02. You're good. Oh, we're ready to start. Okay, then. Well, thank you for joining us tonight. My name is Miss Mary. I'm a Girl Experience Facilitator here at Girl Scouts of Central California South. And thank you for joining us for our basic sewing class. Um, Ms. Natasha is my coworker. She's also a girl experience facilitator here and she'll be um, producing for me tonight. And tonight we're going to learn how to sew on a patch, how to like thread a needle, tie on the knot, make a straight stitch. Um, we're even gonna figure out how to mend something because I don't know about you, but those tags in your clothes, to me, they're really itchy. And you know, sometimes when you tear those tags out, it makes a hole in your seam. And that's what I did last week. So I brought one of my shirts to show you how I fix it. Because when you have stretchy shirts, a straight stitch to fix that doesn't always work. So let's go ahead and get started. Do we have somebody to volunteer for? Let's see here. Uh, new share. Do we have somebody to volunteer for the Pledge of Allegiance, Miss Natasha? Mm, I didn't see that one. I saw one for the promise and I can't remember her name. Okay. Great. Anybody who wants to volunteer, um, feel free to raise your hand or indicate. Lulu. I'm Ann Adele and I would like to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and stand up. If you'd go ahead and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Thank you. And let's go ahead and do our Girl Scouts Promise and Law. Great. I would like to do it. I'm Ariel and I'm ready. Okay. Ariel had already um, requested for the promise. Uh, so if somebody would like to do the law, you could put it in the chat and Miss Natasha will pick you. 
Go ahead, Ariel. Everybody make your Girl Scout signs. Have your three fingers up, Violet, like Ariana's right hand, right hand. Okay. Right hand. Okay. Right hand. Okay. Right hand. Okay. And now, Ariana, you need to start talking. Can you guys talk about so they can hear you? On my honor, I will try mm -hmm. to serve God and my country and to help people and uh -huh. at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. Excellent. Thank you so much. And who do we have for the law, Miss Natasha? In the chat, it's Lulu. Is she the same one that did the pledge? Yes. Okay. Can we get a third person? Lulu and Annabelle are different girls. Oh, if the other one would like to do the law, that's fine. Uh, Abby S. is going to volunteer for the law. Okay, go ahead, Abby. I will do my best to be honest and fair, friendly and helpful, considerate and caring, courageous and strong, responsible for what I say and do, and to respect myself and others, respect authority, use resources wisely, make the world a better place, and to be a sister to every Girl Scout. Thank you so much. Okay, Lulu, you remember when we get to the end of this evening, I will have you start our uh, friendship circle song for Make New Friends, okay? All right, so let me stop sharing the screen here. All right, so I have here my sewing kit from home. And also, if you live here in the Central Valley and you belong to our Girl Scouts of Central California South, if you want to go to our gold mine store, they just got these in. They're really cute um, sewing kits. And it even has like your fingernail clippers and a nail file and some other things. So you could take it to camp and you'd have your sewing kit and your vanity kit all in one. So I thought that was really cool. And that's what I'm gonna be using for our workshop tonight. So tonight, as you can see, I don't have a sewing machine here. We're doing hand sewing. So we're gonna start out with our needles and our threaders. This is a threader that I have. I think it's really hard to see. Oh, you can see a little bit with the reflection. There's some wire that's at the top of that. And I'll show you how that works. You can also, if you need to, have a seam ripper. It looks like that. It's very pokey, so make sure you keep the lid on it. And then I'm gonna use some bright red thread and sewing so that you can see my stitches. Um, usually if you're gonna sew something green, you'd wanna use a green thread so it wouldn't show so much, but so that you can see what I'm doing, I'm gonna use a, a contrasting color. And then I have my patches. Um, I have some patches here that have like the sticky stuff on the back. You can see it's a little shiny that I have my iron already and I'm gonna use my iron to secure it to my vest. But what happens to all those patches that are iron-on patches? They always come loose. Just like this one on my vest. I ironed it on, but you can see it's coming loose on the edges. So I'm going to show you how you can stitch around those so they don't all come loose. So your needles, your thread, and then you also need, when you're sewing, to have some straight pins. Straight pins really help to hold your things together if, um, if you need to. Sometimes if the patches are real hard, the straight pins don't work so well, which is why I like to iron them if I can. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Just a minute while I'm going to do some technical stuff and get this to flip over and then Hang my camera up so you can see my table. Oh, it turned off. Okay, let's see if I can get it to turn back on. 
Hold on. Why did it turn off? Okay, I'm back. Let's try it again. Uh, there we go. Okay, let's try it again. Okay. Gonna hold. All right, that's much better. Okay, so to get your needle threaded, what you're gonna wanna do, if you're a daisy and you have a bunch of little needles like this and you have a choice to choose from, go ahead and choose the one that has the biggest eye possible because that's gonna be a whole lot easier for you if you're a little girl. If you're a cadet, you can handle doing these tiny little needles like that. So let's see, do I need to bring the camera closer down to my hands, Miss Natasha, or is it showing all right? Uh, it's showing all right. Okay. So I'm gonna get some of our thread out. This is always the most fun part of starting a new needle of a, a new spool of thread is to get that first loop out. Sometimes you have to take your needle. There it goes. You can pop it out like that. So when you're doing, um, when you're sewing, you don't wanna pull out too much thread. So what I do is, okay, I'm gonna to have to tip this up. Hopefully I'm not upside down. Oops. And I have tonight moves a lot. If you can see, I'm going to kind of pull my arms. You really can't see me, can you? No. Okay, so I'm gonna spread my arms far out like this. So from arm to arm, I never wanna have a piece of thread longer than that. And when I'm showing girls to stitch, I like to show them, um, turn it upside down again. There we go. I like to show them to use double threads because that's easier. And if your thread is too long, then it becomes cumbersome. Now you'll notice that this thread is nice and clean and this thread is fuzzy. And it's really difficult to get the fuzzy ones to go through the needles. So I always clip it off nice and clean if, um, if I'm getting ready to thread. Now you can do the old finger lick, put a little bit of spit on your finger and then rub it on the end of your string and that will get it all together. And then you can just hold the needle so the hole faces you and poke it through right like that. Now, if you have good depth perception, you can thread your needle just like that. If you prefer to, you can hold your needle sideways like this and then do your needle sideways like that. It's not always that easy. I've had a little bit of practice. I've only been doing this since I was eight years old. So if you can't get it on your first try like that, don't feel bad. It takes some practice. But what you can do is you can get these little needle threaders. And this has a little wire and you just put it in through the hole like this. Sometimes you gotta squish it a little bit to go right through just like that. And then that gives you a big hole to put your thread through just like that. And then you slip the needle off of the wire and it pulls your thread right onto the needle, just like that. Okay, so then I pull my th needle all the way to the loopy end and I bring my two loose ends together. And again, the other reason why 
when I'm hand sewing, I like to have two threads instead of just one thread is I don't really like to mend my clothes. It's a chore. And if I do it once and then I pop a stitch, then I have to do it again. So if I have two threads and one pops, at least I have one more there. So if you didn't see how I did that that quickly, I'm gonna snap it off and do it one more time. I hold the ends in this finger. I wrap it around my finger till it's overlapping each other. And then I just roll my fingers, you know, like when you get glue on your fingers and you roll it, roll it off, it just spins that thread. And it kind of looks like that sort of looks like a pretzel. And then what you want to do is you want to pull it down to the bottom. Be careful you don't pull it all the way off. I've done that before too. And if this is gonna be a thread that is visible, then you wanna make sure it's nice and small, but sometimes it has these little loopies there and it's gonna go inside my patches and you're not gonna see it. So don't worry about it if it has a few loopies, as long as it's a nice big knot that won't go through your material. So I'm gonna start out tonight showing you a couple of different stitches. Um, now you can do all kinds of stitches and be, get fancy stitches like daisy stitches and French knots, and that's called embroidery. But we're not gonna go into embroidery tonight. We're just gonna go into basic stitching. And so the first basic stitching we're gonna do is your straight stitch where you basically take your needle. And one thing I forgot to mention is the thimbles. If you'd like to use a thimble, you can use a thimble. It covers your fingers so that when you push on the end of the needle that it doesn't poke your finger with the needle. So I like to wear my thimble on my middle finger and use my first, my index finger and my thumb to hold the needle and then I push it along with my middle finger. And I don't always push it with the top. I like to push mine with the side. But whatever works for you, that's the way you can do it. So to do a straight stitch, you just basically go down and then up and then down and then up. And if your needle's long enough, you could do it three times, but I'm just going to do it twice. So I like to do more than one stitch before I pull my thread because my stitches end up in a straighter line. If I were just to go down and up and pull it and then go down and up and then pull it, then my stitches might not exactly be lined up. So one of the ways, once you get comfortable doing a straight stitch, one of the things that shows that you're a good seamstress is if you can learn to do very tiny straight stitches. So what I do is I just grab a tiny little bit with my needle and then I do it about eight or 10 times. And you try to make those spaces the same size each time you go up and down. And then you could kind of scrunch it up on your needle and get a whole bunch of stitches all in one pass. And so then once you have it all scrunched up, you pull it out and then you can see you have all those stitches done all in one pass. So how are you doing out there? Does anybody have any questions? Miss Natasha? Uh, Lulu, I hear your hand is raised. Just unmute yourself and ask. Um, is it fine if we make ourselves things like a coin bag or something? Sure, you can go ahead and do that. That would yeah. be neat. Yeah, because Some... I, I have a bunch of coins that I need to coin bag for that's awesome so you could like if this were a bigger piece of material you could fold it in half uh -huh. and then do the straight stitches if you go through both layers mm -hmm. it will make a pocket I know. So, so, 
And then you can just fold over the top layer and stick a button on there. Mm -hmm. And what we can do is... Um, One of the things that we did last year when we did a sewing class is we made uh, needle books. So when I was a little girl, they didn't have these fancy twirly things to hold your needles in. They just had paper cards and the paper would tear. So we would get um, pieces of felt like this and cut them into rectangles and then stack them up like this. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and cut one out right now. I'm gonna cut my green a little bigger than the other ones. So that I'll, it'll be bigger, just like the cover of a book. And then I'm gonna cut a long rectangle. You don't have to do this. It's just something that you could do later if you have some extra material. I didn't put this on the supply list, but this is something you could do later on. And it doesn't have to be exact measurements, just however big you want it to be, but do try to get it in a straight rectangle. One of the girls said that they're still stuck on the knotting. Sure, on how to put a knot in the beginning. I believe okay. that's what she's talking about, yeah. Sure, let me show you how to do that one more time. And then after I show the straight stitches again, I'll show you how to make the knot at the end. So put it on your finger like this. And then I pinch it with my finger and thumb and then wrap it around one time. When I was little, I would wrap it around two or three times and it makes it really loopy and kind of difficult to pull at the end of your knot. So one time is enough as long as you get it overlapped like that. And then you just roll it, roll it, roll it right off your finger. See how that kind of curls and twists around the thread? And then you just take your fingernails and just hold it and pull it to the end and see, I got a long tail that time. Sometimes you get a long tail. If it's on the inside of your project where it doesn't show, that's fine. Nobody will ever see it. If you don't like it long, take your scissors and trim it shorter. Did you need me to show you that one more time? Uh, we have it now, thank you. Okay. okay. And then uh, Grace, you have a question? Grace, do you have a question? Um, I have a needle book holder. Oh, she's showing the needle book is what she's doing. Oh, I see I'll it. open it up. I'm on it. You're an initial. That's so cool. I like how, can you show to the camera again, the stitch on the side? I, this is called a blanket stitch. She did a blanket to decorate the outside of her book. That's what I was talking about earlier, how stitches can be fancy. Okay, so let's show, I'm gonna sew together this, these felt pieces into my needle book. I've got a knot. I'm gonna go ahead and do the straight stitches. And then I'm gonna show you how to make the knot at the end. My fingers have gotten really tough over the years, so I don't always use a, a uh, symbol. And I didn't get perfect and measure that I was exactly in the center because I know all I have to do is fold it in half and then match it up and trim it down and it will be perfect. Okay, so at the end, after I've sewn my straight stitch to make the knot, what you're going to do is basically sew in the same spot over and over again. So I'm gonna make a tiny little stitch and go up and down, just like I'm making a circle. Like if my finger were the fabric, my, my th thread would be making a circle and two spots going up and down in the same spot, just like that. So I'm gonna go up and down in the same spot at least three times. 
and I try to use the same spot, just like you're stepping in somebody's footprints. If you're at the sand, at the, at the beach or in the snow, you try to stitch right in those same stitch spots. It's not always easy. I don't always get it perfect. And then what I do at the end is now I go through sideways inside that donut of stitches. I'll go through sideways once and then twice. And then if I really think it's gonna get a lot of use, sometimes I'll even go through that last loop just like that again. See how there's a little loop there? And then I'll pull it tight around my needle. And just like that. Now, if I were sewing something like a stuffy that has stuffy material, instead of just snipping off my tails and leaving it to show on top, or like if I were sewing a blanket that had quilted stuff inside, like this was the top of the blanket, and this was the bottom of the blanket, and I didn't want my tails to show, what I could do is go underneath the fabric and then go over here some ways, a little far ways away, and then pull my, my stitch like this and then cut my thread. And then when I flatten out the fabric, look what happens to my tails. They disappear. Now, because this is a book, you can see that my tails are right there. But if it were a stuffy or a blanket, then your tails would totally disappear. Okay, any questions before we move on? Uh, yes, Lulu had a question. Lulu, go ahead and unmute. Um, is it fine if it's like, like a little lighter than the real sheet like this? Um, are you talking about the color of the thread? Yeah, yeah, is it fine? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Oops, my camera fell down. Sorry about that. It's, it's perfectly fine for me because I'm busy sewing anyway. <laughs> okay, let me fix it one more time. All right. Oh, um, ag. Oh. Got to tip it that way. There we go. Now my fingers are coming in the right way. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what's called. This was was a running strip stitch or a straight stitch. It's called running because it it keeps going. It doesn't go back and go back. It's a short what I mean with this next stitch. Now I'm showing you this stitch because this is Excuse the one me. to fix my t-shirt. Yes, go ahead. Um, oh dear. Can you show us how to do that knot again? Sure. Sorry, my phone is messing up. Let me fix it. My back. Oh. Okay. No, no, let's try this way. All right, that's better. Okay, so you want to see the knot one more time? Yeah. Okay. So here's the bottom of the knot, the, the strings on my finger. And then I'm going to wrap it around my finger once. And I want to make sure that I'm crisscrossing a lot of, of my tail. Because if my tail is really short like this and it just matches up, then it won't wrap together. I need it to really kind of crisscross. See that, how it's right next to each other? And then when you rub it with your fingers, it'll twirl those two threads together. See? Trying to twirl it in an open circle. 
see how it twirls like that. And then you just take it and then you put, put your fingers right here at the top. You can use your whole finger or just your fingernails. And then when you pull it out, it should make a knot in the end. And see, that time I've got a big loop. It's okay, it's not a big deal. That loop is fine. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to do an overhand stitch. So this one is gonna look kind of like, you know, like when you take a marker and you draw loop-de-loop -loop circles in a line like this. So this is kind of what you're going to be doing with your stitches. You're gonna go down and then you're gonna go up a little bit far away, not super close, a little bit far away. And then instead of going here to do my next stitch, I'm gonna go halfway in between where I went down and where I came up and I'm gonna go back down and then I'm gonna come up far away from the stitch again. And then I'm going to come back down halfway in between those two spots. But I'm gonna come up far away and go back down halfway in between. Now it looks almost like the running stitch on the top, right? but it only looks that way on the top. If I show you what it looks like on the bottom, you will see it looks like this. Now see, they look very different. The running stitch still has spaces between each stitch, but this overhand stitch, you can see the stitches kind of make those loops, just like I was saying, if you draw it with your marker and you're making loops on your paper, those stitches are gonna, are looping around the thread, the fabric. And the reason that's good is when you have stretchable fabric that moves and stretches like this, if you have a straight stitch and you try to pull it, then that stitch, has the thread has no give and it's gonna, it's gonna break, but if you, have this kind of stitch and you pull it, you see how those crisscrosses, they, they kind of move a little bit. It gives you a little bit of movement. And so your, your stitches won't break. So that is how we are going to mend my shirt today. So you can keep practicing on your fabric if you want to, but I know you all have these kind of shirts like these polo shirts or the t-shirts and they're, they're stretchy like this. Well, my shirt has these itchy tags right down here by my waist and they bug me like crazy. And I don't know about you, but if you don't have your scissors with you and you just yank that, that uh, tag out, this usually happens. And you end up having a hole in the seam of your shirt right there. So I'm gonna show you using this overhand stitch. I'm gonna go ahead and use green thread because I need this, this for uh, work. How I use that overhand stitch to fix my shirt. So while I'm getting my thread all ready, is there any other questions? Anybody need something shown again? I don't see any, everybody's busy. Away. <laughs> okay, so if you have a hole in your shirt or a hole in your pants, pants are easy to, to, to fix holes in. You can use your patches, like your fun patches that you can get from Girl Scouts or any other kind of patches. Like if your knee of your, of your pants gets thin, you can put patches on top of it. That's always fun. Okay, so I don't need a whole lot of thread just because my hole is really tiny, but I do need to do that loopy thing. So I want to have it at least twice as long, and then I need room for my needle to maneuver too. So I'm going to make it about, about five or six times bigger than my hole. 
again because I like to double my thread and I don't like to have to mend things more than once. So I'm clipping off this end because it's all kind of fuzzy. And I'm going back and I'm kind of cleaning up all the extra threads on my shirt too. Okay. So, all right. So the nice thing about this overhand um, stitch is you see like this is a machine stitching and the machine stitching stitches, it makes it look nice and straight, just like it was a straight stitch. Like if you pulled this, you would just see the little stitches nice and straight. But because it's a machine, it covers up the edges. And that's kind of like that blanket stitch that Gracie was showing us. That's kind of what the blanket stitch does is it, it wraps up those edges. That's another use for that fancy stitch. If we have some time later and any of you are interested, I can show you or maybe Gracie can show you how she does stitch. But see, I'm trying to make my stitches about the same size as these stitches. Just can't really tell where I sewed it or where the machine sewed it. Now, this is something good to show you. Even grown-ups make mistakes. Sometimes when you pull your thread through, your thread moves off the center and you end up getting a loop. So which thread do I need to pull to get rid of that? I can pull my thread so I can get it back to the middle and it's not having too much loops. If you're sewing a whole lot, this thread will start to get um, weak. So maybe you do it on purpose that you move it to the side if your thread starts getting weak, but that's only if you sew a big amount. That won't happen with this tiny little stitch. So now on the bottom, I'm making my stitches twice as big as I am on the top. So the top side will look just like the same stitch. And the bottom side, just crossing my thread, my threads to expand and my threads won't break. Oops, almost forgotten, came up in the same spot. Any questions? No, you're still good. Okie dokie. Oh, wait, Lulu has another question. My stitches are kind of messy, but, but yeah, that's, that's that. okay. It takes lots of practice. It takes lots of practice. You're coming like in. A hundred years ago. <laughs> yes. Um, well, go ahead and go on what you were saying. Cause I couldn't like, really hear you. Okay. I was going to say like 100 years ago or actually more than 100 years ago, like 150 years ago, when little girls went to school, this is actually something that they had to do at school. They had to learn how to make perfect little stitches. Could you imagine if you had to do this at school every day and just sew for hours and hours? It's kind of fun when you do it a little bit, but it gets a little boring if you do it for hours and hours. But it does take a lot of practice to get your stitches the same size. That's what they call uniform. And you can see, even with me, sometimes I got to pull this out so it doesn't leave a loop. Um, you don't have to be perfect. You just know how to know how to, to fix it. If one of your stitches goes sideways, then maybe you just come back with a second stitch to make it look straight. The more you practice, the better you get. Okay, Mary, just to let you know, your uh, internet connection, I think, is kind of lagging a little bit. Um, okay. And then uh, Grace wants to see the stitch again. The overhand stitch? I think that's what she was talking about. 
Okay. Put it in the chat box. So let me get my phone off. Make sure it's not not using. Oh, that's why it was using the the office Wi-Fi. How is it looking now? Is that a little better? Yeah, you sound a lot better. Okay. Thank you. Grace was she had the the in and out stitch i forgot the name of it but the last stitch she showed she's struggling a little bit on trying to do it if, if you could please <laughs> no problem all right let's see here let me get my computer back all right all right i'm gonna get a new piece i'm gonna get a red piece of thread so she can see it easier. No, I got two needles out. All right. So let me kind of show you before I thread my needle, what your needle, what your thread is ending up doing is your thread is actually making circles like this. Does that make sense? So you're, you're taking your needle, like I'm gonna pretend that these needles are my fabric, okay? So my needle is coming up here, it's going backwards, but then it's coming over here and then going backwards and coming way over here and going backwards. Does that make sense? I believe it does. She hasn't said anything more. <laughs> she might be practicing, Mary. Okay. Yes, yes, we understand. <laughs> awesome. There you go. So you could pretend that you're an, a microscopic Girl Scout on a needle roller coaster and you're doing loop-de-loops. Sometimes when I have a boring sewing job and I need to do lots of stitches, I come up with fun little imagination stories like that. So I'm gonna go, go forward, come back into the middle, go way forward, come back into the middle, go way forward, come back into the middle. So when you go forward, you want it to be twice as long as the one you have in the middle. And always with hand stitching, you're end up, gonna end up having one, of, especially if you use two threads instead of one, you're gonna end up having that one thread and you're gonna have to adjust your needle to make sure your loops don't show. So that's the overhand knot. And again, to finish your knot, you just go one, two, three in the same spot and go through sideways and then just cut it off. So to show you, just so that you have the skill and know what to do, if you are going to sew with just one thread instead of a double thread, some people find it easier. I already explained to you why I like to use double, but some people like to use single. So what you do is you still knot it the same way, you wrap it around your finger, you roll it off. By the way, how are we doing on time, Miss Natasha? I'm sorry, what was that, Mary? How are we doing on time? You are at 6.44. Okay, that means I need to get to the patches soon. All right, so if you have your knot here, this part of your, your needle and your thread is gonna move just like that. So. You don't wanna have your tail longer than your knot. Your knot's gonna be longer than your tail, but you don't want it to be too short or it'll fall off. So you make it a little bit shorter, about halfway between your knot and the needle. 
And then as you stitch, if you're doing lots and lots of stitches, I'm gonna go a long way just to show you how fast. And you pull your needle through and you see, oh look, my tail is stuck. Now I have to take my thread and I'll pull my tail out of those stitches and now I'll move my needle closer to the end. And now I'm ready to continue stitching some more. And that's how you sew with just one, one piece of thread, okay? All right, so 645, we need to get going on the uh, patches here. So these are the patches and you can see like this is the National Park Service Girl Scout Ranger patch that my troop got a few years ago. Pat. And you have the ones that are flat um, and they don't have this whip stitch, then you have to take your needles. Well, where did my needles run off to? There's, there they are. You have to take your needles and push it all the way through the whole thickness. And your needles can get gummy after a little while, like you get halfway around and it's all sticky. Just a hint for you, fingernail polish remover will get that stickiness off. So then you can keep going. But essentially all you're gonna do is the same thing. Um, let me see what color can I do? I've got some brown here. I'll do the brown patch. So the easy way, other than just going up and down through the patches, which can be a little hard, and especially if girls are stitching them, the stitches um, don't always come out level or equal, which is perfectly fine because that proves that you did it yourself and some grown up didn't do it for you. But if you like to have things nice and neat, this thread doesn't want to go through this tiny needle very easily. I'm going to use my threader. I'm going to show you how I like to do the patches. My favorite are these ones that have this whip stitching on the edges. See, this one doesn't have the whip stitching over the edge, but this one does. And so all I need is a thread that is. Um, again, I don't want my patches to pop off, so I'm gonna use double thread. And I don't worry if there's a long loop or a tail because I'm gonna hide it inside my patch so you don't see it on my vest. And I have ironed this on, but it's coming loose. So I, it's in place. If you don't iron it on in place first, you can use your stick pins to hold it in place. But I like to iron mine on to hold it in place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my thread and I'm gonna kind of figure out, okay, right there is where the edge of my patch is. So I'm gonna go and take one bite of my vest inside my patch in on my vest. So you, you're not gonna see where my stitch is, where my knot is. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come out here at the edge and we're just gonna take a teeny tiny bite of my vest and come up like this. And now I can go inside these loops. Just like I'm putting my foot in my sock, I'm gonna just slip it right down the edge, just like that. And I can go um, really close if I want to. I can go a little bit far away if I want to. And then I just take the tiny little bite off of my vest. And then I make my needle hide in all those loops again till I go down to the next spot. So what you end up seeing, your thread just basically disappears right inside that channel of loops. And they even have clear plastic thread that sort of looks like fishing line. I don't really recommend that for hand stitching because it doesn't like to make the knots. It's much, much easier to use that type of thread when you're using a sewing machine, um, but not very easy to use it when you're hand stitching. 
So now you'll see if I flip this over, you can see on my vest, I don't have stitches all the way. I just have itty bitty bites of my thread. So that is the way that I like to sew the patches. Of course, not all patches have this loops of thread around the outside, but these are my favorite patches to stitch is where you can hide it in all of those little loops. Does anybody have a question on how to sew on your patches? I don't, but I actually made this. You're making what? I made this. When I had time, I made this. Oh, awesome. That looks great, Miner. Or May Mayor, I said your name wrong. I'm so sorry. It's May Her. May Her. I think Ivy had a question. I saw her hand go up. You're going to unmute yourself, Miss Ivy. How do you do the little bites? Again, she wants to see the little bites. Sure. Hold on. My camera is <laughs> <down. laughs> I'm at the office. I have my regular stand at home. Okay, so let's see. So see here, I'm gonna show you the edge. Can you see that? I'm trying to figure out where my hands are at camera. There we go. Okay. So can you see there's these two little pieces? That's all that goes into my vest. So I just, go down and up with a little tiny piece and turn the corner. Sometimes turning the corners is the hardest, hardest part of doing patches. Okay. So then I'm gonna go through the threads and then to take the tiny little bite, I just go down and I come right back up really close. Well, maybe not that, that was only one thread. <laughs> you wanna get at least, you know, several threads. You don't wanna grab one thread because then when you pull on it, the thread in your vest will break. And then you don't wanna take your bite way out here because then what will happen is your vest, you'll, your stitch will show. You wanna take your bite super close to your patch so your bite doesn't show. I know it's not called a bite, it's called a stitch, but when I work with kids, I, I like to say bites. I don't know why. Maybe because that's what I called it when I was a kid. Okay. So this is a difficult thing that I do sometimes when I pull out a stitch and I don't want to take it off my thing is I figure out how to back it out backwards. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, that time it worked, okay. So any, I think uh, Daisy had a question. Did Daisy, uh, not Daisy, uh, Grace. Grace, you had your hand up for a minute and Lulu. No, Lulu, do you have a question? Um, it, is it fine that if we're done, we, we can like, what do we do when we're done with our thing? When you're all done, then you can either sew on the rest of your patches that you get from Girl Scouts, or if you're done sewing on your patches, then you can clean up everything and put it all away in your sewing box, just like well, this. Well, it's not really my sewing box that I have. It's um, uh, my aunt. Oh, nice. That's nice to so, Okay. So I'm gonna show you that I'm gonna clean up my things afterwards. But as you can see, I've got quite a few patches I need to sew. It's a good thing to do when you're sitting in front of the TV and your mom or dad's watching a boring show and you're really not into it. Uh, you can sit there and sew patches if you're only a little interested in the TV show. Um, any other questions? Nope, I don't see any. Okay. 
So like I said, the other the important part is when you're done sewing, make sure you pick up everything and put it all away because if you have loose needles or loose uh, pins and they end up in your carpet, it's really ouchy. You don't want that to happen. So make sure you find all of your pieces. And I'm gonna show you my little needle book that I made just now. Um, you just take your needles and you pretend like you're gonna make a stitch, but then you, you don't pull it out. You just leave your needle right there in your needle book. And that's, maybe I can make a M on mine and do the blanket stitch around the edges, just like Gracie did on hers. All right. What's our time now, Miss Natasha? You're at 6.55. Excellent. All right. So was it Lulu that I said could lead the Make New Friends song? Yes. It was. Lulu, are you ready to lead us? Oh, Grace says the book was a gift. Awesome. Um, okay, I got it now. So, can I see the promise? Because I can barely remember it. It's hard. Oh, do you know the, the song Make New Friends? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so we take our right hand and we put it yeah. over our hand. Grab your Girl Scout sister's hands. Are you all go holding on? If you a sister or a mom there, you can hold their hands too. Go ahead and start us off, Lulu. Make new friends. Wait. And keep the old. I can't remember it. What? Are you okay? Let's everybody sing together. Make new, Make new friends, friends, but keep the old. One is silver and the other gold. A circle is round. It has no end. That's how long I'm gonna be your friend. Yay. Yay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us here at Girl Scouts of Central California South for our hand sewing class. I hope you learned a lot. If you like, you can watch it again on our YouTube video. And so now if you go to summer camp and you tear your shorts or you put a hole in your vest or you lose a patch, make sure you take along your little sewing kit in your backpack. So you can put your patches right back on your vest if you fall off. All right. Thanks for coming, girls. Goodbye. Bye-bye.